So you're struggling with what armor you should be looking for. Well, I'm here to help you out with that. What's up guys, Reckless here and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna go over what armor you should be looking for in Destiny 2 in order to maximize the efficiency of all of your characters. And if you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content in the form of guys, class builds, weapon and armor recommendations for PVE and PVP, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on any video. Okay, so last week or so, I made a video about light.gg for beginners. In short, it's a third party website that is like a catalog for everything Destiny 2. This includes weapons, armor, god rolls, item locators, etc. If you haven't seen that video, then I'll put a card in the top right of the screen right now. That way you guys can go ahead and check that out. However, while going over the armor in that video, a few things have changed with my account. This video will be a little bit more in depth with the armor that you want to look out for in Destiny 2. While aesthetics are nice, you more so want to look for the armor that will help with your character's build before the look. This can happen in many different ways. If I actually had to put them in order of importance, I would say that armor mod slots are first, stats are second, exotic armor is third, energy type of armor is fourth, armor power is fifth, and aesthetics are most likely last. Let's go ahead and talk about armor mod slots since I feel that it is the most important when it comes to armor. So normally an updated armor 2.0 or higher piece of armor has four mod slots. And this is excluding exotics like the Aeon armor set or Lucky Pan. Prior to Witch Queen, as soon as the 30th anniversary bundle was released, this had actually changed. The 30th anniversary bundle gave us access to the Grasp of Avarice dungeon and if you actually completed the encounter on the master difficulty, you would be awarded with Artifice Armor, which gave you a fifth armor slot specifically for Artifact Mod. We're gonna use Artifact Mods every single season. So having that extra slot for them definitely makes a difference and it is huge in my opinion. Unfortunately, I wasn't high enough light when I got back to playing Destiny 2 before Witch Queen due to my close to three year hiatus um, in order to actually farm the Grasp of Avarice on the Master Difficulty. I was told that the Master Difficulty before Witch Queen was so much easier than it is now, given that the Master Difficulty recommendation power is now 1590. So you definitely need a coordinated team in order to do the Master Difficulty of the Grasp of Avarice. Personally, I still have a lot of armor to grind out myself, so don't feel bad. Next, let's talk about stats. When I made the light.gg video, I had said that I recommend you keep all gear that has a total of 60 or higher. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and say scratch all that. You should only keep armor that has a base total of 65 or higher instead. This means that that number of 65 is before it's masterwork, as well as before you put a general armor mod on your armor. The higher the base total before masterworking it or adding mods to it, the better your stats will be. Higher stats means faster regens on your abilities and your health, you'll move faster, or it'll take a lot more rounds to take you down. This is a lot harder when you are actually trying to grind for something specific for your build um, with specific stats. And we all know that RNG in Destiny 2 is not favorable to anyone. If you are unsure if you meet the 65 total requirement and you have a masterwork piece of armor that has a plus 10 stat increase, just take your total and subtract 22 points from it. If it's 65 or higher, then go ahead and keep it. If not, delete it and put materials in better pieces of armor. If you have a masterwork armor that has a plus five stat increase instead, then go ahead and subtract 17 and go ahead and follow the same rule. As of this video, the best way to have a chance to get high rolled armor is when your ghost has the armorer mod on it. These mods are in the third slot on your ghost. What these mods do is that they help you get one higher rolled stat on a piece of armor, you get that rolls with random stat and you automatically get 10 points in the stat you choose. But when you have that 
mod on the ghost, it'll also give you a higher chance to get more of that stat in that piece of armor. After that, you then have to go to the helm and focus umbral armor. This will cost you one umbral engram, 25 legendary shards, and four risen umbral energy. When you decode it, there's a chance that it may not roll with a 65 or higher, so you'll just have to keep working on it until you get one. Now, this is better than not actually doing this and just waiting or being at the mercy completely of RNG. At least this gives you a chance or a higher chance to get a roll of 65 or higher on a piece of armor. Next, let's go ahead and talk about exotic armor. And I feel that it is the third most important thing to worry about when it comes to the armory that you wear on your characters. Having the right exotic for PVE and PVP, if you do that kind of stuff, will help you on your endeavors. While there are tons of exotics in Destiny 2, you really only want to focus on a few of them for each subclass, but it really comes down to your personal preference as well as your playstyle. As a hunter main, I normally use Frosties for everything in PvE except for boss encounters. And then when it comes to boss encounters, I will switch to Star Eater Scales with Palmyra B. And then for PvP, I will just go ahead and switch to Stompies for every subclass. In the past, I have used Gemini Jesters and I've been slowly moving away from them. But Reckless, why don't you use Orpheus Rig anymore? And well, truthfully, that's a very easy question to answer. Mobius Quiver with Star Eater Scales, Palmyra B that has Explosive Light, and the Devouring Deaths mod does a lot more damage than if you had Orpheus Rig, which gave you a third Mobius Quiver shot and Gallahorn. Whichever exotic you choose, just make sure that it has the stats that you want that has a total of 65 or higher. However, I understand that focusing on exotics and getting that type of role is not easy. So what I normally do is anytime I get an exotic and it is 65 or higher, I will go ahead and lock it regardless. And the lowest I would go on an exotic for a total would probably be 63. But even that's kind of pushing it. And if you have no other choice but to go lower than 63, just keep that roll until you get a higher roll of that same exotic. Next, let's go ahead and talk about energy types. And this is the fourth most important on a build for your armor. I have seen tons of different builds that all do different things on the same type of subclass. This also comes down to your play style and how you like to play your character. Now, I haven't done any build guides yet, because I'm still missing a lot of mods given that I was gone from Destiny 2 for close to three years and I came back before Witch Queen was released. And it just doesn't make sense to me to talk about an amazing build that isn't complete, you know? However, energy types on armor can easily be changed to the specific energy type that you require for your build. It'll just cost a few materials to do so. And I will be doing another video getting even more in depth with energy types when it comes to making your build in a future video. So stay tuned for that. While yes, your armor power is important. It will not matter if the stats you want aren't on the armor that you need them on for your ability. Power on your armor comes over time. As of this video, my hunter has a power of 1582 and that didn't happen overnight and it definitely took me a lot of grinding to get there. You should really worry about everything that I mentioned prior to power for your armor and then power will come over time. Just keep doing activities that get you pinnacle gear and your power will go higher. Now that we got all of that out of the way, go ahead and make your character look cool AF as much as you can. There are tons of different options for customization in the way your character looks through the help of shaders and universal ornaments. Aesthetics really does nothing for your character's performance, so go nuts. I have seen a lot of really cool looking guardians out there, so the possibilities are endless. And I have an idea 
on what I want my Warlock as well as my Titan to look like. So, what do you guys think of the importance in armor or would you actually change the order of importance from mine? Let me know down in the comment section below and we can go ahead and discuss that. Also, if you guys have an idea for a video that you want me to do in the future, go ahead and let me know that in the comments below as well. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of the video, and I will see you guys in the next. Hey, hey you, watch these videos too. I know you like them. Go, 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 go.